Good evening. Yeah, I'm still the same. He hasn't changed for many years. Sorensen, <laughs> Sorensen. thank the, the program council which is a body uh, uh, from uh, members from all over the world that has uh, worked very hard on putting together the program uh, of the conference which I hear from you that you generally like although some of you consider it too broad and too, too rich which I think is a good thing to be criticized for um, and uh, last but not least, I would like to thank uh, the team of the Forum 2000 uh, that has made all of this possible. Uh, there are a number of them, so I will not name them, but again, I would like to thank them very warmly because they have worked tremendous hours and they are, they are excellent. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, spoken uh, yesterday and during today about uh, political prisoners, prisoners of conscience, and uh, we spoke about one particular person. We spoke about Leopoldo Lopez uh, of Venezuela. Uh, and we have the honor uh, at this conference to welcome uh, his wife, Lilian Tintori. I had uh, remarks prepared uh, on, uh, about her to introduce her but uh, she and her colleagues made my life much easier because they prepared a video that is describing the situation in Venezuela, describing the case of Leopoldo and also uh, describing her a little bit and, and the faith uh, that uh, she has been put into. She is not a, a, an activist, she is not a politician, she is a, a, a wife, a mother of two small children and she is now in a position that she has to fight for her, for the liberty of her husband and for the uh, freedom in her country. So uh, without further ado, I would like to ask my colleagues to put on a video that would explain all of that. Muchísimas gracias. Buenas noches. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you and many thanks uh, to Forum 2000 for inviting me to speak. I am so thrilled to be here among such strong advocates for freedom, democracy, and human rights around the world. In the past 15 years, Venezuelans have looked for both inspiration and hope to the legacy of the President Havel and the Czech Republic for its extraordinary perseverance to secure the country's freedoms from Soviet repression. President Havel described the fight for freedom against dictatorship in this way. When the internal crisis of the totalitarian systems grows so deep 
that it becomes clear to everyone and more and more people learn to speak their own language and reject the hollow men mendacious language of powers to be, that be. It means that freedom is remarkably close, if not directly within reach. Czechoslovakia was successful in achievement its freedom. It is my hope and the hope of my husband, Leopoldo Lopez, that Venezuela is close to achievement its own freedom. Just one year ago, Leopoldo and I were here in Prague, attending for 2000. We were both honored to engage in dialogue with the conference inspirational participants and group, and group of individuals who have commitment their lives to the, to the quest for freedom and human dignity. We were moved by the outpouring of support we received from all of you about the plight of Venezuela and inspired by how eager they were to help our country. Unfortunately, one year later, I am here alone and in my family's hour of greatest need. Since February 19, 2014, Leopoldo has been wrongly imprisoned in Venezuela. Leopoldo is a politician. I'm not. I'm a loyal wife and a developed mother who is now alone in raising our two young children. Manuela, she's five. Leopoldo Santiago, she's two. And because he has temporarily been silenced, I have no choice but to speak out on him behalf, his behalf. And this is what I have to say. No one in the world should doubt why, Venezuela, but why Leopoldo is in prison in Venezuela. Maduro is afraid of him, and he has great reason to be. Hugo Chavez and Maduro have not delivered on their promise to our people, and they have taken away our fundamental freedom, our right of free speech, freedom of association, freedom of the press, and freedom to vote for candidates of our choosing. It is very important to understand that just because we have elections does not mean we live in a democracy. In fact, elections mask the reality that we are actually living in a dictatorship. But despite persecuting Leopoldo and our family for almost 15 years, my husband has not jailed, he has not wavered, and he is not afraid. afraid. He has spoken out and criticized the government. He has provided hope to the Venezuelan people that we can do better. And he mobilized hundreds hundred and thousands of people to take to the street and advocate no violence for the constitutional exit for President Maduro and for new, free, and fair democratic elections that would return our government to the people. It is his success and the, fourth, and the forthcoming exp exp expiration of his wrong wrongful disqualification for running for a political office that scared Maduro. A strong and powerful government has, n has nothing to fear, to fear from criticism. <coughs> Only a weak and insecure government looks up people who speak their mind and brings the weight of an entire system on the, shoulder, on the shoulders of own man and his family. To read the indictment against my husband is to enter a strange and un unfamiliar world that, world that is almost impossible for anyone to understand outside of Venezuela. The government actually has climbed in writing an overdosing of page that despite the fact that is all his speech, Leopoldo advocates for mm -hmm. constitution and non-violent change in Venezuela, that he had sent powerful subliminal message 
to his supporters and engage in acts of violence is my husband has such superhero powers, subliminal message. <laughs> Would he send subliminal message to the government to release him, prison, or to President Maduro to resign? I don't know who the government of Venezuela believe it is going to fall with the, uh, these crimes. Surely not the Venezuelan people nor the international community. Maduro has made clear policy and clearly that my husband is guilty of this so-called offense and that he will be in prison. In late July, when asked about my husband's uh, trial, this is the President Maduro said on a national television. Well, it is a trial of an extreme right leader who is responsible for crimes, violence, and destructions of human lives that he planned. He has a quite a crazy messianic vision that let me tell you, alienates and poison people making them crazy. He is responsible for crimes and he has to be accountable for them. He will be, it is as simple as that. Justice will be done. Only justice will punish that resurgence, resurgence of a neo-Nazi and, fa and fascist sectors, sectors that want to impose s scenarios like Ukraine, Palestine, Syria, or Libya that will not happen. They will not come back. This is a clear violation of my husband's presumption of innocence. In addition, Leopoldo had, hasn't been allowed a single se session with his lowers without the presence of prison guards. Leopoldo is in a military prison. And the huge, in the case, appro approved every one of the more than 100 witnesses for the pr prosecution and turned down 58 or six, 60 witnesses proposed by the defense. In short, as my husband has said, He's facing a firing squad, not a, tri not a trial. And the outcome has all already been decided. The president can imprison my husband's body. He can imprison his mind. Even though Leopoldo is suffering through the cruelty of eight months and extendedly solitary confinement, and a, and a quarter of the time with no contact with our family. He's getting stronger. He reads, writes, exercises, and prays in his cell. And every moment he spends in prison is only strengthen, strengthening him, him, his resolve. We will all survive. But to be honest, it's very difficult for me and for my children. It is hard being a single parent. It is challenging to feel, to feel unsafe in my own country. And it breaks my heart having to explain to my daughter Manuela after every visit in, to Ramo Verde why her daddy can't come home and how in mm. Venezuela sometimes the heroes are in prison. Mm. My husband mm -hmm. needs mm. the support of all countries around the world that stand for freedom, to stand in solidarity with Leopoldo and my family, and our country, and our people through this dark hour. We need a clear message sent to President Maduro and the government of Venezuela that it cannot trample on the rights of its people with impunity. Because my husband can't speak for himself I want him to conclude with a brief part of his, of his remarks that he gave in a close hearing in the Venezuelan court. I believe that from these remarks, you will understand exactly the kind of man that Leopoldo is. Precisely why he has been imprisoned by President Maduro and why the court made sure the courtroom was closed. Leopoldo said, 
I am in jail because I have denounced the Venezuelan state for being corrupt, inefficient, repressive, and anti-democratic. I am in jail for demanding the resignation or substitution through constitutional, constitutional means of Nicolás Maduro as a president of Venezuela. I am physical in jail. I am isolated with several restrictions to visit, but neither mm -hmm. today nor ever can they jail mm -hmm. my deep conviction that we have the right to fight to bring democracy and freedom <laughs> to Venezuela. Thank you. Our struggle is the same as those that many of you in this room have gone through or are also going through right now. All of us take great inspiration for President Havel's legacy. In the world of President Havel, you may ask what kind of republic I dream of. Let me reply, I, I dream of a republic independent, free, and democratic, of the republic economically proposed, and yet socially just, in short, mm -hmm. of a human republic that service on the individual and that therefore holds the hope that the individual will serve it in turn of a republic of well-rounded people because without such people it is impossible to solve any of our problems, human and economic, and economic ecological, social or political. I share President Havel's dream, both for the Venezuelan people and for each of you. The situation in Venezuela is truly desperate, and we really need your help. In recent weeks, President Obama, the OAS Secretary General, New York Times, and the Washington Post have all called for my husband's freedom. And just this week, past week, the United the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention found that Leopoldo is being held in violation of international law. Here at Forum 2000, I have been gathering support for a public letter to President Maduro to be signed by individuals and organizations that wish to stand in solidarity with our cause. Please ask me for a copy of of the letter, and if you are interested in, sa in signing, please just give me or our lawyer, Jared Janser, Jared Janser, your card, mm -hmm. and we will add your name. Mm -hmm. He has been a great honor to stand before you mm -hmm. tonight and speak about the case of my husband, Leopoldo Lopez, mm -hmm. and the broader political situation in Venezuela, our country. Although this is a great chapter in Venezuelan history, I have not lost, lost hope, nor has Leopoldo. For as President Havel once said, none of us know all the poten potentialists that slumber in the spirit of the population or all the ways in which that population can surprise us when there is the right interplay of events. For me to be here and to speak out puts me and my family at great risk. Mm. I do this for the love I feel for Leopoldo, for my children, Manuela and Leopoldo Santiago, and above all, for my country, Venezuela. And Bahak Havel said, all we need is love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.